welcome to SmartCon. I'm so excited to have you here. Uh, I believe, you know, for the audience, Anatoly, you need no introduction. Uh, you know, as the founder of Solana, you've been a leader in the space, really helping usher in this future web world of Web3 and decentralization. Uh, so I guess to even start with, you know, I, Anatoly, let's start with the basics. When we talk about trust minimization and applications that are being built with principles in that mind, you know, what do you think that means? Well, I think uh, crypto kind of, first of all, thank you for, for uh, having me. And I think uh, crypto's ethos is around empowering the user. It's really giving the user control. And it almost starts with the, the very basic idea of self-custody. It's having the user have the keys that reflect ownership of a digital asset. So with Web3, I think as the concept of what a digital asset evolves, you get into much more complicated things, you know, from NFTs, from a, a position in a, a pool, in a lending pool that's Oracle driven by like, you know, a chain link feed or a position in an AMM. These are all digital assets that are under the user's control and how they function and operate, I think is really important to make sure that users have the transparency and the control at all times during, during that process. I love how you talk about users and talking about, you know, how Web3 offers us, you know, as users to change how, you know, the, with the social and economic relationships that we have, right? I'm curious, like, what do you think is Web3's impact on how we interact with each other? So I think it's still really early, you know, to me, it all, almost feels like 1994 when there were about 10 million people on bulletin boards and stuff, and you're trying to predict Facebook, you know, that 20 years later, there's going to be a social graph that's worth half a trillion dollars. And it's a really tough thing to imagine. But the kind of example that I always like to bring up is that, you know, you've seen things like the Constitution Dow. Uh, that was, you know, 40,000 people, maybe at most, that came together to, to take action. Imagine if it was 40 million. Could 40 million people all come together and make substantive changes in the world? I honestly believe that, like, once we have the self-custodied users onboarded to these networks, 40 million people will come together and buy every coal plant in the world and shut them down. Like, people will actually be able to take real direct action. And, and I think that's a really, really powerful thing. No, absolutely. Yeah. Instead of just buying the constitution, right. You can actually make a new constitution and implement it and <laughs> be a little country. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Really cool. And earlier this year, you know, Chainlink price feeds launched on Solana. I remember this is, it was a major milestone as it was Chainlink's very first non EVM chain integration. Can you speak to a bit to the role that oracles like Chainlink play in enabling this, you know, trust minimized products and services we're talking about? Um, oracles are the core part of what makes all the sophisticated parts of DeFi work. You can't have a lending protocol without an oracle. You can't run derivatives or any other any other kind of interesting pieces without an oracle. So I think they're just really critically important, and I think. As the crypto matures and we get more and more users on these networks, we start seeing other other things being implemented by Oracle. You know, um, I can, you know, eventually I'll be able to take an insurance against uh, my flight to my favorite vacation spot that it's never going to rain, right? And that has to be driven by an Oracle because ultimately the Oracles are what provides the eyes to the network that actually they actually the things that observe the, any uh, uh, outside events yeah no very true and i'm sure everyone wondering what is your favorite vacation spot if you are open <laughs> to sharing <laughs> i am a huge fan of california so like uh, over the last you know four or five years i've just been traveling up and down the coast and i would say solana beach is still one of the best spots in the world Absolutely. Namesake of Solana, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and what are some of the most exciting use cases and products that could be built on the Solana ecosystem that you think would be able to use these chain link battle tested oracles? Well, what I love about Solana is its speed and throughput. And I think that's a really differentiator from, I think, all the other networks combined. You look at you look at go to websites like real tps solana literally does more transactions and all the other networks put together um 
And the kinds of DeFi products that people can build, I think, are just much more interesting. You don't need to use an AMM. You can actually build a, a central limit order book. And folks are starting to take those concepts and apply them to the next generation of DeFi protocols. So now I've, in the last hackathon, Lulo Finance built a whole lending protocol, something like similar to Aave, but it runs on a central limit order book plus an Oracle feed. So it's really important that we see products that utilize a high performance, low latency feed um, alongside these like high performance markets. So I'm really, really excited about like the next few years of, of folks building these out and, and uh, making it possible to, to, I think for DeFi to compete with centralized services. No, absolutely. Yeah. You need you need speed, right? And you need accuracy and you need um, reliability. And together, Chainlink and Solana were able to help deliver that to the dApps that are actually building on it. Uh, and then when we talk about global impact, you know, the scalability of decentralized infrastructure stands out as one of the largest challenges facing, you know, the Web3 industry. And really curious, like, how does Solana take on this issue of scalability and high throughput? This is uh, kind of our, our ethos is, is that a lot of the work is already done by companies like NVIDIA, by Intel, that every two years they double the number of cores in these systems and make it cheaper and cheaper to push more transactions through these networks. And uh, that doesn't mean that our job is easy. It still takes a lot of work to write the software to take advantage of it, but at least it's something that um, will clearly work. So as you see the network, go through hardware upgrades and through software upgrades, it continuously increases its bandwidth, like the amount of transactions it can handle and reduces its latency. Um, and that to me is really the, that evolution and constant iteration, I think is, is the most important part. Um, and in a lot of ways, it's very similar to Linux, like the, the open source kernel that everybody loves. Um, every, you know, every year hardware changes, every year Linux takes advantage of it. And uh, we're excited to be kind of part of that journey. Yeah. Well, in this journey of constant evolution and innovation, I mean, I was really excited to hear about the new Solana mobile software stack and the Saga phone. I'd love to hear you know, more about you know, why you felt this was a necessary advancement for the broader crypto ecosystem. So um, crypto needs to be treated as a first class citizen in these mobile platforms. Uh, and because of my background and, and most of my team are former Qualcomm folks, we felt like we can do it. Um, so I think the, what this really enables for users though, is that they know that wallets and the applications and dApps that they're using can never steal their seed phrase. You'll never get an update from a, you know, a wallet provider that accidentally logs your seed phrase externally to the device because the seed phrase is hidden in a secure element that is not even on the same chip as the operating system is running. So you have this uh, almost hardware grade level of protection. Um, and that to me means that wallets can now actually iterate much, much faster. They can build very rich applications to do much more than they do now. And that's the exciting part is that like by, by having the operating system and the hardware work uh, to do, doing the right thing and, and actually storing and providing security, um, all the applications can literally just kind of have a ball and, and build and, and build awesome features uh, and be competitive with the, the Web2 counterparts. And obviously, I think one of the key elements to the Solana mobile stack is the dApp store. You see that the Web2 business models are just not really making sense these days. Companies like Magic Eden, um, they can't take a, a user-built asset, a decentralized asset, and charge 30% more on their mobile version. Uh, that just doesn't make any sense, right? So you need uh, application environments that treat digital assets the same way that they, that they treat physical goods. So this is, I think, a, a big fundamental change for to uh, the business model of how DAP store runs. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about that, the aspect of that as well. I mean, no, that is huge. And of anybody, right? You have Qualcomm engineers who are the best at creating the um, mobile phones that were their chips that are in all of our um, cell phones that people don't even recognize. So you guys are the best position to do and take on something monumental like that. Um, and as we think about that, what else do you think is currently missing from the Web3 space that you know, we need to propel it to the next uh, level? 
I think um, all the pieces are there. I think honestly that technology wise, the last four years have been just tremendous improvements, not just in Solana, but you see things outside of Solana advance that are really rapid pace as well. Um, and like the biggest constraint now is, you know, awesome entrepreneurs that want to take that plunge and build amazing applications and scale them to users. Um, that's been, I think, uh, the challenge always, but uh, right now, I think is the best time to do that because, you know, we are in the so-called bear market, but as I like to call it, a build market. This is the best time to start a company and start iterating and really grinding on figuring out product market fit because when you do so and then the macro environment changes, you really, really can grow really quickly. And that this is, I think, the biggest opportunity, I think, for this generation of entrepreneurs. Absolutely. I mean, you are quite the inspiration for a lot of entrepreneurs as well. I mean, any words of wisdom for people who are thinking of taking this opportunity to build? Um, I would uh, suggest that you go check out one of the Solana hackathons. That's like the easiest way to get started. But even if you don't, I think uh, focus on an idea and something that you love and you think will bring value to the world and then just build and iterate and eventually you'll get there. Yeah. And then final question. I mean, where do you see the Web3 ecosystem in five years? And then so, next after that, where Solana is important <laughs> to getting us? Um, I think in the next five years, we will probably see some breakout thing that causes us to go from, I think, the 10 million monthly active users that are actually, actually signing transactions across all the networks combined to 100, 200 million. And when that happens, I think we'll see those breakout applications, the, the Facebooks that we really can't even predict what's what what is actually going to be driving those. So I'm I'm really excited about that. Um, I think given Solana's uh, performance and like hardware tra trajectory, I'm hoping it's, you know, 99% of uh, transactions in the world are running on Solana at that point. <laughs> That's good. Sounds like a vicious but doable goal. Well, thank you again, Anatoly. Thanks for coming and sharing your wisdom with the audience here at SmartCon and excited for future collaborations with you and Chainlink. Thank you. Take care.